The new iPhone 15 lineup has been released and it's both super similar to last year's lineup with the regular 15, 15 Plus, 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max models, but it's also very different when you start getting under the hood, making it more difficult than last year to choose the right iPhone model to buy. So in this video, I'm gonna go through 10 purchasing mistakes that you need to avoid in order to make the right choice. And then I'm actually gonna give you some real practical advice on which one to by depending on what you really care about. So let's jump right into the first mistake you need to avoid, which is thinking you need to buy the 15 Pro models to get the awesome new smooth chassis design. All of the 15 models come with the new curved edges that merge the display into the frame, and even better, they now finally have a textured matte finish on the glass, so the regular models won't be fingerprint magnets anymore like they have for years. These changes alone will make the regular other 15 models feel amazing in the hands, just like the 15 Pro models. Moving on to mistake number two, don't think you need to buy the 15 Pro models to get the best display quality. This year, the regular iPhone 15s now finally have the same Super Retina XDR display as you get on the Pros, with up to 2000 nits peak outdoor brightness and 1600 nits for HDR content. They also finally get rid of the notch, so they now get the cool dynamic island feature that we got on last year's 14 Pro models. However, beware of mistake number three because the regular 15s are still lacking a couple of important features. Don't think you're getting identical dynamic island and display experiences because the regular iPhone 15 models still come with 60 hertz refresh rate displays, which means the dynamic island animations won't look nearly as smooth as on the pros, as well as general browsing and swiping through your TikToks. The regular 15 also misses out on the always on display feature, which really made the new iPhone 14 Pro model stand out since the display never turns off. So if those features are important to you, don't make the mistake of buying the regular 15s. Now for mistake number four, don't assume that the 15 Pro models have a much better camera than the regular ones like what happened last year because the 15 and 15 Plus now finally get the upgraded 48 megapixel camera sensor from the 14 Pro. And even better, the aperture is actually better on the new regular 15s, sitting at f1.6 compared to f1.8 on the Pro models, which means that more light will come into the sensor for better low light photography. On top of that, the regular 15 models also support the new 24 megapixel photo output, which will give you really sharp photos compared to what we have now on the 14 Pro, so don't think you have to get the 15 Pro models. Moving on to mistake number five, don't assume that the new USB-C port on the iPhone 15 lineup is basically the same across each model because the one on the regular 15s is actually very slow with USB 2.0 speeds, which is actually the same slow speed as the old Lightning port. Only the new 15 Pro models actually support USB 3.0 with up to 10 gigabits per second transfer speeds, which is a huge upgrade compared to previous iPhones, so don't make that mistake. And moving on to number six, don't assume that the new A17 Pro chip in the 15 Pro and Pro Max is gonna be a huge upgrade in performance compared to the regular 15s because it still has the same six core CPU with only a 10% single core performance performance boost, and on top of that, the new A17 Pro GPU only has a 20% improvement, which actually comes from an additional GPU core with six instead of five, which by itself is 20% more cores, so the performance jump is quite lacking. So basically, in terms of performance, I think the A16 within the iPhone 15 will be just fine. Now getting into mistake number seven, you probably heard that Apple has officially gotten rid of leather and replaced it with their new fine woven case, which honestly looks a bit cheap and not that protective. So regardless of which iPhone model you buy, you're gonna wanna get an actual protective case, especially if you choose the expensive Pro Max, so this is the Upro Ostan case from our sponsor Taurus. 
It's slim, sleek, and minimalist while looking premium and feeling super smooth in your hands while also having military grade drop protection thanks to its 360 degree all around X shock airbags absorbing and dispersing impacts while protecting the display as well. But my favorite part is the adjustable three-way kickstand that's actually built into the new second gen MagSafe ring that aligns perfectly to your MagSafe charger or other accessories with full support. And of course, the MagSafe ring is on a hinge so you could use it as a stand in any angle you'd like, like portrait and landscape mode, which is great for watching movies. And you can also use it as a finger grip, which is awesome for the 15 Pro Max. They've got great customer support if you have any questions or concerns, and you can order one today using the link in the video description and pinned comment below. Getting into mistake number eight, if you're someone who hates heavy phones, you no longer have to avoid the Pro models because this year, the 15 Pro and Pro Max now come with a new titanium chassis that makes them 10% lighter than the previous models. So now, the 15 Pro is only a bit heavier than the regular 15 even though it packs a bunch of extra hardware. So don't make the mistake of feeling forced to get the regular models if you don't like heavy phones. For mistake number nine, don't assume that both the 15 Pro and Pro Max have the same cameras because they don't. The Pro Max now comes with a new 5X telephoto zoom camera for the first time ever, enabling much better quality zoom shots and up to 25 times zoom length. Now this will make it a lot better for photos and video recording. However, the downside to this is that it no longer has a 3X telephoto camera like the Pro model does. So if you're taking photos at between 3x to 4.9x zoom, the quality will actually be better on the less expensive 15 Pro model. And finally, for mistake number 10, you probably heard that the 15 Pro Max model just got the first price increase in years, being the only new iPhone 15 model to get more expensive. But don't make the mistake of choosing the 15 Pro instead, because if you look closely, it actually didn't get more more expensive than the 14 Pro Max. Apple simply took the 128 gig model away and now it gets 256 gigs of storage standard for $1199, the same price as the 14 Pro Max with the 256 gig upgrade. So in reality, you're still getting the same value as last year, but you're being forced to upgrade the storage this time around. And as a little bonus mistake, don't forget that the new action button only comes on the Pro models, so don't make the mistake of getting the regular 15 if you really want that new feature. And now let's finally get into the buyer's guide portion of this video, starting off with who should be buying the regular iPhone 15 model. Of course, it's for those who are on a budget looking to upgrade their iPhone for the least expensive price since it's $7.99 or only $33 a month. And because of that, it's likely also a good first iPhone for Android users who are finally deciding to switch over since many Android phones start at a lower base price. And this year, the regular 15 models arguably got the biggest upgrades with a dynamic island and Super Retina XDR display that matches the Pro models, as well as the same new curved design and matte back glass, USB-C, and the new 48 megapixel camera. So in terms of value, you can't beat the regular iPhone 15. Now, of course, the 15 Plus is meant for those who really want a larger display, but aren't willing to dish out the crazy $1,200 for the Pro Max model. This is honestly a really good middle ground, especially since the display is so nice now on the regular 15 Plus. Now the 6.1 inch iPhone 15 Pro model is for those who want the best of the best features like the 120 Hertz ProMotion feature, always on display, 3X telephoto camera, new titanium chassis, and super fast USB-C port, as well as the new A17 Pro chip. And this one is still available at the same $999 price, which is insane in the face of inflation. So it's a really great choice for anyone who wants it all, especially in this smaller size and with the new fun action button. And finally, the 15 Pro Max is for those who want the best features with the largest display and the best 
battery life. Basically the king of all iPhones, and as a bonus, the larger display is gonna make the pill-shaped cutout look smaller, as well as the actual bezel size, which is super thin this year. So it's gonna give you the ultimate experience for consuming media, playing video games, or anything else you can do on your iPhone. And as an added bonus, you now get the new 5X telephoto camera, which will greatly improve far range zoom shots. So there you guys go. If you're gonna be upgrading to a new iPhone 15, let me know which model you're getting down below, as well as the iPhone you currently have right now. And definitely click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks to Taurus for sponsoring this video, as well as you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.